video I will be talking about the laser cutter that I want to build and particularly the X axis. I'm going into details there so it's kind of technical. Well, if you're into that, keep watching. If you're not really into technical stuff and you just want to be entertained, just stop the video right now because it's going to be you know, technical, going to talk numbers and stuff like that. Uh, in the end of the video I'm also going to answer some questions that I got from, uh, from you guys uh, and I will be answering that. One more thing before we start. I'm not pretending to be the CNC guru. There can be and will be probably errors in things that I'm saying or explaining because I'm just figuring it out myself. This is a video blog of my mental process of how on how to build it. So it's not going to be flawless or anything. So don't just copy anything I do and expect it to work. Um, just be aware of that. It's just my process of how I build it. Well, I did some uh, research and uh, came up with the following uh, items that I need. Uh, so I need an X, Y and Z axis. So movement in this direction, this direction and up and down. And of course I need a laser and of course I need a, a PC with some software to run the whole thing. Um, so I made the plan to first focus on the X axis because this is the biggest one and um, so also the easiest one and everything has to be built on top of the X uh, axis uh, rail system so I figured I will start with this so um, what do I need? I need some rails, some guidance, some linear motion guidance that will prevent you know going from side to side with just one direction movement so I need some rails uh, of course I need a motor um, there are servo motors and stepper motors uh, I will go into detail later I need some driver that uh, will uh, you know uh, give current to the motor and make sure it is in the exact position that I want it to be so this is electronics and of course I need some linear motion system because once I have the the motor turning uh, how do I convert the turning motion into a linear uh, motion with very high accuracy and low backlash so that's um, the first thing I want to talk about uh, this week so I will skip all this and do this later in later videos and, and, and later stage I want to first focus on the X uh, part only and then order some parts for it and uh, then build it so um, before I, I could decide what to order I had to do some research and some uh, calculations and um, so let's go in, into details there so for the motor part um, basically there are two options to uh, to go with for choosing a type of motor. There's the servo motors and there's the stepper motors. So I had to do a little bit of reading on what the differences are and uh, so I'll share them with you. Basically the servo motor is um, a motor that you drive by a DC uh, signal. Um, it's actually a pulse. You, you feed it a, pul a pulse once in a while and uh, the width of the pulse um, gives you the position that you want the motor to have. Then the motor starts turning into that direction and there's a potentiometer in the motor built in and with a wiper that moves uh, from side to side and by measuring the voltage here uh, the motor knows how many turns it did and where the uh, where it is. So based on the pulse and the feedback the motor itself figures out where it wants to go and this is uh, called a closed loop system and um, well that sounds very attractive to go with this but um, I decided not to go with this most software uh, that is uh, available for free on, on the internet for um, CNC machines works with stepper motors so instead of you know doing the thing nobody is doing or only the more expensive systems are doing I decided to go with the system that is ev that everybody is using so I have more support and more information on the internet and well they probably also have good reasons to go for the stepper so what's a stepper? Uh, the stepper motor works on a different principle you have uh, more leads uh, to it uh, basically five uh, leads one is the, the, the common ground and then you have or the power depends on how you you connect it and then you have four leads to uh, make the motor step so every time you you uh, power 
the, the one center lead and another lead and then the motor will step to that position so it knows it's in, in that position. The, 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 the disadvantage of this way is that um, you have no absolute um, reference to where you are. So basically when the whole system starts you, you say well this is the zero position and then you do a step forward, a step forward, a step forward, a step backwards, a step forward and by keeping track of the amount of steps you did you should be able to track where the motor is. But there, there is no actual feedback in this system so this is called an open loop system. But um, these systems are, have proven to be very stable if the motor is power enough and if you control the motor the right way. For transforming the uh, ro rotating motion into a linear motion, um, there are two systems I, I could choose from, um, principles more. And the first one is the belt plus pulley system, um, where you have uh, a pulley, basically a gear with a belt on top and well it's very simple uh, well, of course this is more like this yeah so, and then it continues that way and that way but if this thing rotates then the belt is being pulled in uh, the correct direction and of course you can mount here your uh, laser or something you want to move and it will move in uh, in the correct uh, direction um, and the other one is um, the lead screw or the bolt and nut basically uh, solution where you have a very big uh, lead screw or a very big bolt and then you have a nut on top of it and so if you rotate this so in, in this case the motor will be well could be here so a motor and uh, you know you know mount it here and then it rotates uh, so as this rotates the red thing which is uh, uh, the nut will move uh, back and forth. Um, the advantage uh, of this way over this way is that the resolution, the resolution that you have, I mean per per uh, per cycle, it's it's you move a smaller amount of uh, you know area. So the resolution is higher. So this is an advantage that this system has over this one. Uh, so you have more resolution, but does it, it also give you more precision? And after doing some research on that, the answer has to be no. It doesn't give you more precision, it gives you only more resolution. And let me explain this. I mean, one revolution will move maybe one or two millimeters, so that's a high resolution. But um, if you stop, so let's say first we move the thing like this and, uh, you know, this red thing gets being pushed that direction. Then you stop and you rotate the other, the other way and here you can already see it, there's a little bit of a, a gap here. So first it rotates a little bit and then uh, after a while this edge here hits the, hits the knot and then it will start moving. So although the resolution is high, the precision is not that high if you change direction. You have a big a bit of a, a dead space, a space where nothing happens. And there are all kinds of solutions for that, that you can counter this effect by adding another one. So maybe you can add another one here that, um, uh, that prevents this problem. So this edge is making a contact here and this edge is making a contact here. So it can be solved, but um, it's more difficult. And in this system, you, you hardly have any backlash. So this is really more, it's more uh, precise but it has a, a, a less good resolution. So there's benefits to both of these systems. Um, in the end, I uh, decided to go for this system uh, because of the following reasons. Uh, the main reason is um, the speed. Uh, because the resolution is not that great or not that high, um, the thing can move faster because there's a limit on how fast the motor can rotate. And then here the thing will move very slowly, so almost like slow motion. So that's a, that's a disadvantage and um, um, the other disadvantage of that is that the motor has to do a lot of revolutions and make a lot of noise as well. So, and, um, and also this system uh, tends to be more uh, expensive and this is more suitable for if you're having CNC 
milling machines and you know, heavy stuff because the belt obviously has its limitations on strength so but I decided to go with this one and um, uh, yeah it made more sense to me it was cheaper you, you can move faster uh, the resolution isn't that good but there are solutions to uh, increase the resolution uh, of uh, the stepper motor which is called micro stepping and I want to talk to you about uh, micro stepping so about this micro stepping what is micro stepping and why do I need it uh, well since I'm working with the belt pulley system um, the resolution isn't high enough because I did some research and what is the standard industry standard for a really high-end professional CNC machine the smallest step you should be able to take is um, 0.01 millimeters so that's really tiny but this is the high-end machines right not the, the, the do-it-yourself one so we could go for a little bit less but uh, let's aim for that so let's take a look at the belt. The belt I want to use has a pitch of the tooth uh, which has 5 mm uh, distance between it. The, the gears I want to use uh, that I want to mount on the motor has 16 tooth teeth. So uh, if, one, if it rotates one time um, with the 5 mm per, per tooth it will give me 80 mm per revelation. So um, what is the smallest step I can take with the motor? Well, the steppers I'm looking into, they have 200 steps per revelation. So if, if I divide those two numbers, I will get a resolution by, without micro-stepping of 0.4 millimeters. I just told you I'm aiming for the 0.01 millimeters. So that's, <laughs> that's like a factor of 40 uh, too big so it's not good enough so I have to do something to uh, make the resolution higher so let's take a look at the stepper motor again this is the inside simplified of course I won't go into a lot of details there but basically it comes down to you have a magnetic field here and a magnetic field here and here you have a little arrow axis that that you can you know pull to one of those two magnetic fields it works a little bit more complicated but for simplicity let's say it's like this then uh, if I power this one the arrow will move there and if I power this one the arrow will move there but um, since I need more resolution what I can do is I can power this one quickly stop it and then power this one stop it power this one stop it power this one etc et like very fast you can do this with PWM techniques I will go into PWM in a later video but basically you power this one half and this one half and you do it a little for back and forwards and if you do it fast enough the the arrow will not be here or here it will actually you know be right in the middle if you do this you will have a 50% duty cycle here and 50% uh, duty cycle there so and then the arrow will be in the middle so what does it do for me well if you do this this is like one bits micro stepping you will add um, uh, an in-between value so that would lower this number 0 0.4 to 0 0.2 so I can divide it by 2 if I do one bit uh, micro stepping but I want to be here 0 0.01 so how many bits of micro stepping what resolution of micro stepping do I need to have to come close to my goal, goal? Well, uh, I made a little list, it's very obvious of course, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. So in the region somewhere here, in this area, if I can do 5 to 6 bits micro-stepping in the driver that I'm going to build, I will be actually getting the resolution of a really professional high-end uh, CNC machine with cheap materials, just, you know. Um, so that's great. So I'm I'm really confident that I can go easily to this one. Um, you know, with the skills I have, I should be able to do four bits micro stepping with ease. So, but maybe I can push it a bit more and go for the really good resolution that I'm aiming for. So, uh, this micro stepping it sounds really great, but it mu there must be a catch to it. It cannot be just free resolution, of course. There has to be some trade-off. So, what's the trade-off? Well, it's very easy. 
every time you add a, a, a bit of micro stepping you lose 30% of the power, the torque of the stepper motor which has to do with the signs and RMS and stuff like that but basically uh, it comes down to you lose every time you lose about 30% of power for everything you do so this one is 70% power and this one is 70% power of this one so you can see that it, it degrades uh, very rapidly so it's 70% of 70% of 70% of 70% um, so that sucks right so if I'm losing all the power with the 70% of 70% um, how do I compensate for that well basically I use a stronger motor and in fact I want to use two motors another question that I get asked a lot recently is if I'm still working for Studio Rosengade or maybe on a consultant basis or how that works well I'm not there anymore every day on the work floor uh, but once in a while I get a call uh, from a studio Rosengade with a question about an art piece that I used to work on uh, which I helped uh, developing and they have a question about that and maybe even I go there to, to explain something or to help something out but I'm not involved in new art pieces so let that be clear yes I do support the art pieces I worked on but I'm not actively connected to new art pieces or projects from Studio Rosengade. I got a question um, from Thomas Huste about um, soldering. Uh, what else can I do to prevent headaches because I'm getting headaches the day after soldering a lot. Well the first thing is do get these active carbon filters because they work and um, don't get normal filters or active carbon filters that's what you need and uh, actually all the molecules are attaching to the filter and it really cleans the air um, second tip uh, or hint is to have a fan blow over your work away from your nose and mouth you can also um, go for a different tin that is uh, less aggressive a, a, a different solder um, you can also work outside work outside and have a small breeze and if a fume is getting to your nose just breathe out and not in that helps a lot um, these are the basic things you have to do and if you are really into soldering do use these filters I really recommend them don't be a fool do it it's not expensive it's like five bucks or something do it so you're still watching this video well, and you're probably digging it and you want to know more about this laser cutter. Um, so I suggest you subscribe, uh, log in to YouTube and below somewhere below this video there should be a red subscribe button so hit it. See you next time.